And a good to you. Good morning. And of course, welcome back to the Purple Bench Talk right here on Fiji's Best Mix. Leonard back with you. And of course, keeping you company. It's 12 minutes after 10 o'clock. Trust that all is well on your end of things this Monday morning. Uh, with us this morning as well, we um, are going to be speaking to the lovely, lovely Fiji Women's Crisis Center coordinator and human rights activist. That's Miss Shamima Ali, who's back with us again this morning right here on the Purple Bench Talk, joining us on the show. A very, very good morning to you, Miss Shamima Ali. Good morning. Good morning to all the listeners and good, very good morning to you, Leonard. All right, Mr. Shmi Mali, this morning, uh, like we posted up on our Facebook page, in case uh, you know you missed out on that, uh, we are going to be talking to you about uh, basically the mystifying about rape, okay? The myths about rape. Uh, firstly, I'd like to ask you, uh, we'll just jump straight into it this morning, uh, the myths around rape. If you could just talk to us a little bit more about that. Definitely. So, you know, when we talk about myths, it's all these ideas that exist about why rape happens, and, uh, and out of that, you know, uh, comes the blaming the victim syndrome. So, you know, the false ideas, myths that we grow up with, stories that we grow up with. So, around rape, we have many. When we say, when we hear somebody's got raped, then if it's a child, there'll be a lot more sympathy. If it's a young woman, and we'll say things like, whoa. You know, it's because of the way she dresses, the way she behaves. She goes to the nightclub and she hangs out with the boys and, you know, her behavior is such, you know, that it invites rape. So that's a huge myth about dress and behavior of women. And, uh, you know, and uh, so, and people don't look at who the perpetrators are. People don't look at who does most of the raping when we are hearing about it in our families. And outside of it, when we listen to the media, read in the media, and things like that. So, let's. So I'm going to go through each one of them. You know why? We, how it's called victim blaming or blaming the survivor for what happens to her. So the first one is that one, very important one: dress and behavior. And uh, so, uh, the way a woman dresses, uh, the way a girl dresses, even you know, so always blaming her. So I would say our response to that is in dress and behavior have nothing to do with race. What is, so we have to talk about sex. One of the facts is that in Fiji, the youngest child that was raped was four months old, was molested, sexually molested. And that's four months old. So a baby who is four months old in a diaper, you know how sexy is that for, for a man not to be able to stop himself? Then we've got four months, six months, ten months, you know? And then... The oldest person who was raped in this country was 90 years old, 9-0, a woman who was sick in bed and there was a home invasion and there was a gang rape. Then you've got all the ages, you know, from the child right up to 90 years, 70 years, 60 years. Women get raped within marriage uh, and so on. A lot of children in this country get raped. So dress and behavior have nothing to do with it. And so you look at those facts. Then we can talk about human rights and you can say, well, Women and girls, we can wear what we want to. Why should it hurt somebody else's eyes that they have to come and rape us? Even where, you know, so we have to ask that also. But I think the best way to go about it, look, look at the facts and figures. We all know how to dress. When we go to church, there's a particular dressing. All of us, men and women. We go to a wedding, there's a particular dressing. We go to a nightclub, there's a particular dressing. You know, we go out to a restaurant, but we go to the beach, there's a particular dressing. So everyone knows how to, you know, and some people love dressing up and so on. So it is what they want to do, you know, and we all have uh, the freedom of expression is a basic human right, so, and we all have that. So it does not invite people or anything else like that. It's because women's sexuality is so hidden that we must cover ourselves and so on. You know, even in countries where people cover themselves, like Pakistan and so on, women get raped. Pakistan, is, the rates of rape are high even though they're covering themselves in, uh, in uh, the Arabian countries, you know, Saudi Arabia and things, places like that. Women get it. There's no place on earth where women don't get it, where they co- whether they cover up or whether they don't cover up. So we should put faith to that. When somebody gets raped, please do not look at her and say, oh, because she dressed up in a particular, she went out at night, you know. If women don't do what they're supposed to do, they can get raped. Uh, and, ever. and she gets gang raped. People say it's her fault because she went out drinking. So those are the things we have to really, when we talk about demystifying this rape, we have to talk facts and figures. Women breastfeeding babies in their own home have been raped. 
sick women in bed. Caregivers, some, some caregivers have also raped women uh, who are sick in bed. Boys also get raped by adult men. You know, men get raped by men. Uh, LGBT community gets raped. People with disabilities, let's talk about that. You know, um, you know they, they get raped and things like that. So that's one of them. You know, that, that. The other one is, if, 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 uh, just interrupt me, Leonard, if you want to ask a question. Sure, sure. Um, so the other rape, rape myth is men can't control their sexual behavior. That they are more, uh, uh, they are more sexual beings than women are. No, we all have. Women have been told to suppress their sexuality. Mm. We are not supposed to say, oh, you know, I like having sex, or you know, I'd like to have sex. They all can control themselves. All of us can. If a man looks, sees a, uh, a good-looking woman and he really, well, you know, desires her and sort of says, man, I'd like to go out with that woman, and he might even want to have sex with her there and then, but he won't because there will be people around and he can very well control himself. There'll be people around. Maybe if, if he's of the rape mind, there are men who are rape-minded and there are men who are not. The rape-minded men will admire, will even ask her to go out. If she says no, that is it. You know, but he will never dream of committing this heinous act on a woman's body. But the rape-minded one will wait till she's alone and then grab her and rape her, you know, when he can. When she's powerless, she's, you know, a bit disempowered and things like that. So that's one. We can all control ourselves. And then the other one is... One Thank you for that, uh, Miss Ali. We've actually got a caller online with us uh, this morning. And uh, it's going to quickly cross over to the caller and uh, get him to ask us uh, his question this morning. <coughs> This is Meli. Uh, my question is, what can be done about the extraordinary number of women who still choose not to report rapes by their friends and boyfriends? Okay, sure thing, no worries. Uh, that was Meli, and his question this morning was, what can be done about the um, extraordinary number of women who still choose uh, not to report rape by their friends and boyfriends? Yes, good question, very good question. Meli, the knuckle for that. Um, society has to change its, uh, uh, you know, uh, attitude and its belief systems and so on that puts the blame on women. We have to Sorry for that. Uh, we're going to quickly just jump into another question from my end, okay? And uh, this is uh, back on, uh, you know, just around the mystifying rape myths, okay? Uh, I'd like to ask you a little bit about uh, the impacts of these myths as well. Yes, so one is that as long... Thank you so much uh, for that, Miss Ali. We've uh, got another caller on the line with us this morning, uh, quickly crossing over to her as well, just to uh, get her to ask us uh, her question this morning. Yandra Vinaka, to you. Bula Leonard, I uh, just want to firstly thank you for, uh, to you and uh, Miss Ali for taking this time to talk about such an important issue. Uh, my question is, just for those victims of the of rape, so what are some um, what are some uh, support process that uh, that uh, you have in place, and how has this helped these victims in Accra? Thank okay. you for that. Okay, so. Yes, good, good question. Uh, Thank you so much uh, for that, Miss Ali. That uh, question was actually one of the questions that I had uh, listed here yeah. for me to ask you this morning as well. Okay, I've got another question here, which uh, was posted up on our Facebook page, but I believe this would fall in uh, Stephanie's uh, line in regards to the uh, justice system. I'll put it up just for you uh, in case yeah. you're able to help us with this. Okay, um, this is from uh, Tulia, and her question this morning is: What is the justice system's process for uh, prosecuting a perpetrator? Okay, so... Thank you again for that, uh, Miss Alike. Um, I believe that we've uh, reached the end of our interview with you this morning. Uh, before I do wrap okay. things up, as always, I'll just quickly ask you this morning uh, for your final words uh, from your end, and of course, if you've got any advice for our listeners that are joining us this morning. Thank you so much uh, for that, uh, Miss Ali. That uh, wraps things up for us this morning right here on the Purple Bench Talk, of course, with our interview uh, with uh, Miss Shemima Alike. Stay locked on. More to come your way right here on the show.